In this video, I'm going to make a coin toss simulator in C. So when we flip a coin, the result is either going to be heads or tails. And we could use an existing type in C to represent coins, maybe ints or bools. We could say that heads are going to be true and tails are going to be false, for example. But in a situation like this, where we have a finite number of things that we want to represent as part of a type, it's a good situation to use enum. So we could say here enum coin heads tails. And what we've effectively done here is create a new type, enum coin, and we could assign heads and tails to variables of that type. So we could say like enum coin, my coin is equal to heads. And we'd have a variable called my coin that's set to the value heads. So this is nice because we're representing the problem with the terminology like coin and heads and tails that actually models the problem correctly. So what we could do is use type def to make this a little bit nicer. Cause here, when we say enum coin, it's a little bit messier than we're used to seeing with a variable. Normally we just say something like coin, my coin, right? Like ints, we just say int X is equal to five to get it to work like this. We're going to have to use type def. So we'll say here type def enum coin, and then we'll say coin on the end here. So the way type def works is it gives a synonym to a type. It gives another name to an existing type. So if we say here type def int and I say score, then score becomes another name for int. And I could say like score, high score is equal to 100 and this becomes valid and score is like another type, but it's really just an int. It's really the same thing as int. So when we say here type def enum coin heads tails coin, what we're doing is we're making a synonym called coin for enum coin. So then instead of saying like enum coin, my coin, I can just say coin, my coin is equal to heads. And so this, this is a lot more convenient. This looks more like what we're used to seeing here. So let's actually now make a function that's going to flip a coin. We'll say here coin flip coin. And the function is going to perform a coin toss and return a coin value, either heads or tails. And we'll provide a definition of the function down here. So to flip a coin, we're going to have to use some random number generation because we want the coin to be random, either heads or tails. So to do random number generation, we're going to include stdlib.h and we're going to include time.h. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually seed the random number generator. So the reason why we need to seed the random number generator is we want the random numbers to be different each time. If we don't seed the random number generator, the numbers will be the same each time we call the rand function to give us a random number. So here we'll say s rand, and this is the function that seeds the random number generator. And the value you give it here will result in a different sequence of random numbers. So if I say here s rand, and then I say time null, what I'm doing is I'm giving s rand the current time as a seed and it'll actually take that time and use it to help produce the random numbers. So if every time I run this program, the time is different, we'll be getting a different set of random numbers each time. So let's actually do the coin flipping now. So I'm going to say here rand and I'm going to call the rand function to give me a random number. It'll give me a random number between zero and some very high integer value. So it'll be like zero, or it could be 200, or it could be 456, or it could be some very high integer, let's say. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that number and we're going to do a modulus of two. And that'll give us either zero or one back. It actually kind of tells us whether the number is even or odd or not. So for example, if you had the number eight and you did modulus two, what modulus returns is the remainder of eight divided by two. And the remainder of eight divided by two is zero. The remainder of seven divided by two is one, right? Because three times two is six, you have one remainder. The remainder of six modulus two is gonna be zero because it's an even number. The remainder of five modulus two is gonna be one because it's an odd number. And it just goes on and on like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the random number we get, we're gonna do a modulus of two, and if it's even, we'll return heads. If it's odd, we're going to return tails. And that'll give us a 50-50 probability 
of either flipping heads or flipping tails. So we'll say here, if rand modulus two is equal to zero, return heads. Else, return tails. And then here, we'll actually perform the coin flips. So we'll actually call the function multiple times to perform the coin flips. So we'll say here, for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. If we call flip coin and it returns heads, then we're gonna print f heads. Else, we'll print f tails. We'll say slash n, put a semicolon here, and then we'll run it. And when we run it, we get back the results. We get tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. So the results are about 50-50 in terms of what you get back, but there's some randomness to it because you get two tails in a row, followed by heads, followed by two tails in a row. It's not just gonna go back and forth necessarily. It's, you know, random. You could get a few in a row for, for one or the other. And so we've successfully now built a coin toss simulator in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.